This is Mr. Martin. Uh, these are the video notes for section uh, 4.2. This is going to be uh, video number one. There's probably going to be at least two videos for this section, maybe three, depending on how long they run. Um, so anyway, we're going to be talking about the unit circle today. Um, and um, unit circle is related to uh, one of the perspectives of trigonometry. We'll talk about the next one in section 4.3. but. Um, one of them is based on the circle and the other is based on uh, right triangle trig. Um, so I'm sure you're familiar with uh, right triangle trig. So we've got our unit circle, which we'll talk about today. And then next section, we'll talk about right triangle trigonometry. Um, and whenever you have a problem, um, many times you can use either one of the methods to solve it. Um, you know, it's just whichever one you're comfortable with and um, whichever one might be easier for a particular type of problem. So uh, for this section, we're going to look at a unit circle, which literally, as you can see in the picture here, it's a circle centered at the origin and it has a radius of 1. So if we look at our quadrant angles here um, at 0 or 360 or 2 pi, we've got the coordinates 1 comma 0 because we're... Uh, 1 to the right, and then we've got 0, 1, negative 1, 0, and 0, negative 1. So we've got uh, the equation of the circle, which is x squared plus y squared equals 1. Um, and what we want to do next is we want to um, take a real number line and we want to wrap it around the circle so you can see in these uh, next diagrams here here's my uh, number line going straight up okay and these are for values of t greater than 0 so 1 2 3 4 or whatever you want to make those um, and we're going to take this and wrap it see how the blue is wrapped around the circle and if we pick some arbitrary point here we're going to get an x and y coordinate Okay, so each real number t corresponds to a central angle. So here's our central angle. Um, and we're going to get a point x, y. So the way we're interpreting this, with this interpretation of t, the arc length formula, s equals r times theta, where r is equal to 1, indicates that the real number t is the length of the arc intercepted by angle theta given in radians. Okay? So um, this first diagram, we're wrapping the real number line going in the positive direction, which is counterclockwise. In the second picture, we can also get um, negative angles. So um, we can wrap it uh, going in the clockwise direction and still get some point x, y, some angle theta, which now would be negative. And here, our value of t is going to be less than 0. So um, based on this unit circle, what we end up with, and um, I'll show you a demonstration in class uh, the next time I see you about, you know, that will help you see where these values come from. But basically, with a circle with a radius of 1, what we end up with is that the sine of t is going to end up being the y coordinate, and the cosine of t is going to end up being the x coordinate, and then the tangent, which you'll remember, is sine of t over cosine of t, which then becomes y over x. And then we have our reciprocal function. So uh, I'm pretty sure you've seen these before. If you haven't, make sure you ask me some questions. So the cosecant is the reciprocal of the sine, so that's going to be 1 over y. And the secant is the reciprocal of the cosine, so that'll be 1 over x. And then the cotangent is the reciprocal of the tangent, so that'll be cosine t over sine of t, which just becomes x over y. All right, so these are our uh, six trig functions. Um, if you have any trouble with those, make sure you ask me questions or get some extra help. Um, but uh, again, you should have seen those before. So for much of this class, um, we're going to be working with a few special angles. Um, and these are the same ones that you studied in geometry when you did special right triangles. You did the 30, 60, 90. You did the 45, 45, 90. And this group of angles 
are going to be the ones that we're going to be dealing with the most. So let's take a quick look at um, our pi over 6's, our pi over 4's, and our pi over 3's. Um, the pi over 2's and the pi's, those are just our quadrant angles, so those are a little bit more straightforward. Uh, but let's start with the um, pi over 6's. So that's going to be this angle here, this angle here, this one, and this one. Okay, these are our multiples of 30. Now we have some other multiples of 30 as we go around uh, the circle, but they're, um, they're going to uh, reduce down to other angles, and we'll talk about that when we get there. Alright, so these are our pi over 6's. So I've got uh, pi over 6 here. And then I know if I go halfway around, this is going to be 6 pi over 6, which reduces to pi. So that means if I move 1 pi over 6 backwards, then this has to be 5 pi over 6. And if I move 1 pi over 6 forward from 180, or pi, I get 7 pi over 6. Okay, so um, above and below the pi, I've got 5 pi over 6 and 7 pi over 6. And then we started here at 0. When we come all the way around, it's going to be 2 pi, which in terms of 6 is 12 pi over 6. So that means the pi over 6 right before we get to 12 has to be 11 pi over 6. All right. So um, any of these four pi over 6's, the coordinates are going to be the same. So coordinates for all pi over 6's is going to be root 3 over 2 and 1 half. And um, if you're not really sure where these come from yet, basically they come from um, the right triangles. If I put a little triangle in here, and then I, we have a hypotenuse of 1, and then based on the ratios of the sides, the x-coordinate over here is going to be root 3 over 2 and the y-coordinate over here is going to be a half. And we'll look at that again in uh, section 3. Okay, so what this means, based on our definitions up here for the trig functions, where sine is y, cosine is x, and then once we have those, we can find the other uh, four trig functions. Based on those, we can see, therefore, the sine of t is going to be the y coordinate which is a half and the cosine of t is going to be the x coordinate which is root 3 over 2. Alright and again once you have these you can find um, the tangent it's just going to be sine over cosine you can find the cosecant uh, by doing the reciprocal of the sine you can find the secant by doing the reciprocal of the cosine and once you have the tangent you can do the reciprocal of that to get the cotangent. All right, so moving on, we're going to talk about the pi over 4's next. So the pi over 4's are 45 degrees, so those are going to split each quarter of the circle. So we've got these four, and um, this first one here is going to be pi over 4. And then I know if I go halfway around the circle, that's pi, which is 4 pi over 4, which means that if I go 1 back into the second quadrant, this would be 1 less, so that would be 3 pi over 4. And if I'm at pi and I go a pi over 4 farther into the third quadrant, that's going to be 5 pi over 4. And then if starting here at 0, if I go all the way around, it's going to be 8 pi over 4, which would mean the pi over 4 right before that in the fourth quadrant would have to be 7 pi over 4. So again, there's some patterns here. You notice it goes 3, 4, 5. Um, and then since this was 8, that one is 7. However you want to remember these, 
um, I'll have some tricks for you to help to remember the coordinates if you don't remember those. So we um, again the coordinates for all pi over fours. We're going to have root two over two and root two over two. All right, and again. If we draw this triangle here, it's going to be a 45, <coughs> 45, 90. We've got a hypotenuse of 1, so you can use the ratio of the sides of a 45, 45, 90 to figure out that the x and y coordinates are root 2 over 2 and root 2 over 2. Um, it's an isosceles right triangle. Um, therefore, the sine of t is going to be root 2 over 2, and the cosine of t is also going to be root 2 over 2. So um, I didn't mention this with the pi over 6's, but you can see any pi over 4 is going to have these same coordinates. The only thing that's going to change is um, whether one or the other or both is positive or negative. So if we move over here into the third quadrant, the coordinates are going to be root 2 over 2 and root 2 over 2, but in the third quadrant we know we have a negative x and a negative y. So our sine is going to be negative and our cosine is also going to be negative. Um, again, just your reminder to write down any questions in the margins that you have in class and make sure you ask me. Okay, so moving on to the pi over 3's. So we've got this one, this one, this one, and this one. So here's our pi over 3. This would be 3 pi over 3. So 1 back would be 2 pi over 3. 1 forward would be 4 pi over 3 starting at 0, ending up at 2 pi, which is 6 pi over 3. This one has to be 1 less, so that's going to be 5 pi over 3. Okay, so the coordinates for all pi over 3's is going to be 1 half, root 3 over 2. Again, now we're looking at our 30, 60, 90. We're just putting the um, small side on the x-axis. Here's our hypotenuse of 1. So now in this case the sine and cosine switch from what it was for the pi over 6's. So I've got that the uh, sine of t is going to be root 3 over 2 and the cosine of t is going to be 1 half. Alright so um, again make sure you write down questions. Ask me in class. Um, and uh, we'll uh, see you next time.